The office of U.S. Senator is a very important office. One of the important things that faces the Senate is foreign policy. I always tell people if I were ever elected to Congress that one of the most important votes, if not the most important vote, is on declaring war or whether or not to send our young men and women to war. This is not something that I would treat frivolously. This is something that I would treat as a very, very important vote. When I would have to approach or vote on such measures, I would think not just of random anonymous people, I would think of my own kids. I have three boys. And I would never vote to send any of our kids to war unless it was something that was justified and there seemed to be no, no other recourse. That being said, I think the Constitution gives enumerated powers to government and one of the primary enumerated power, powers is national defense. So we might say that under constitutional government, the defense actually might have a larger percentage of the budget than it does today. But in overall terms, we have to say, is all spending in the military good? Is there waste in the military? Well, definitely. I mean, even as much as 20, 25 years ago, the Grace Commission warned us about $500 hammers and $200 wrenches. So there's an enormous amount of waste out there, and we need to make sure that when we define national defense, we don't define all military spending as being towards national defense. The other thing about it is, is that we have huge budgetary problems and the Republicans often say, oh, it's just that welfare queen. If she'd just go back to work, we'd balance the budget. Well, the truth of the matter is if you look at the numbers, there's not enough money just in welfare to cut to balance the budget. You have to look at the entire budget and approximately 40% of that budget is military. So you really do have to look at the entire budget and say, we are going to cut and we are going to look at waste, fraud, and abuse all across the aisle, all across every bit of the budget. The other thing about military spending as well as a lot of spending is a lot of it's in procurements. It's what Eisenhower warned about, the military industrial complex. We give billion dollar contracts to Halliburton, they turn around and spend millions on lobbyists to go ask for more money for government. So it's an endless cycle of special interest lobbyists. Then the weapons that we decide to make, we're being influenced by the makers of the weapons on which are the best weapons. That's a crime. We sent a congressman out in California, we sent him to jail over taking bribes. But you know, there's some that aren't even bribes, it's just a, it's campaign contributions going to these candidates, but they're driving the military industrial complex and that needs to come to an end. One of the propositions I have for reform is that we do acknowledge that money is corrupting the, po the politics and corrupting the political system, but with McCain-Feingold they took the money and they said, oh, well, we're just going to limit what groups can say in elections and that's wrong. McCain-Feingold trampled all over the First Amendment, and the Supreme Court has recognized this to a certain extent, but I really think most, if not all, of McCain-Feingold was unconstitutional. But I think there is a constitutional, contractual way to control lobbyists and to control the abuse of special interests. What I would propose is that any federal contract over a million dollars simply has a clause in it. This is a clause that whoever wants that federal money has to voluntarily agree to, and that clause would say you cannot lobby government during the terms of your contract, and that you cannot contribute to PACs or political candidates during the terms of your contract. This would be a voluntary contract. You would voluntarily give up those prerogatives if you want to do business in a big way with the federal government. I think that would stop a lot of the abuses. I think this would also be something very popular with independents who are very cynical of both parties with regard to special interests. So I think there are ways of doing that. With regard to national defense, I think we do say that national defense is the primary enumerated power of the federal government. We also have to acknowledge that the Constitution says that when you go to war, you should declare war in a formal manner. Had I been a U.S. Senator at the time of the Afghan War or the Iraq War, I would have demanded a vote on declaration of war. With regard to the Afghanistan War, I would have voted in favor. I think there was sufficient evidence to show that the camps there that were training terrorists did have something to do with 9-11 and that we were very justified in retaliating after 9-11. With regard to is there ever a time when we can go into war without a declaration, I think most pundits have agreed that in a nuclear age that there are certain things that a president can do with either secrecy or immediately in retaliation or in prevention of a nuclear attack. So I think that is acknowledged. With regard to Afghanistan, Michael Shore, 
who uh, wrote the book Imperial Hubris, was a CIA expert on bin Laden for many years. He said that one of the mistakes we made in Afghanistan was not going into Afghanistan, but that we waited a month and a half to go in. So there might have been a reason why the president could have sent special forces in secretly within a few days, and I think that could have been something that would have been justified. However, the truth is it took us a month and a half to get into Afghanistan, and there's no reason why there shouldn't have been a declaration of war vote in Congress, and I would have fought for that. The same way with Iraq, I would have fought for a declaration of war, but I would have voted against a declaration of war with Iraq. I think there was some question whether the intelligence was manipulated and whether or not Iraq was uh, a threat at all to the United States. I think that nobody really uh, believes that Iraq had the potentiality to send missiles across the ocean to attack the United States. Um, the strange thing about Hussein in Iraq is that we had actually been their biggest allies for 20 years because we saw them as a bulwark against the Iranian dominance of the region. So I don't think there was a reason to go into Iraq. The other thing about the Iraq war is, in the end, you have to ask yourself, do you kill more terrorists than you create? And, you know, we inflamed an entire region there, and I don't think, in the end, it was the best thing for our national defense or for our country. But there are times when you do have to go to war, but if you do go to war, I think you should do it formally with a declaration of war, and then there's no question as to what the vote is about. We'll have more discussions about foreign policy and economic policy as things go on, but I I'm glad that you came by RandPaul2010.com today and hope you'll come back. Thank you.